Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video and today we'll be retouching this image that you see on my screen right now. <laughs> Alright, so I did this um, image in studio as you can see right here and um, it's a pretty good image. The background is actually a wall, a white wall and um, actually it was right over there <laughs> and um, yeah, the model was just doing her thing. Alright, so I'm going to be editing this image today. Let's look at the setting real quick because you know I always um, tell you guys what settings I actually use in studio. So I was using the Sony A7 III. I was using the 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 Tamron lens for, for um, Sony. The shutter speed was 1 over 1 25th of a second. I was shooting at f10. It's best to shoot at f10, f8, f7 because you want the entire image to be in focus and the image will be super sharp and my ISO was at 100 you can go to ISO 200 if you wish but 100 is always what I use alright so the first thing I'm going to do with this image is to clean up the skin um, so on this layer uh, the background layer I'm just going to just start cleaning up the skin by using the patch tool come over here to the patch tool and then I'm going to use the wheel on my um, tablet to zoom the image in and all I'm doing is just making selections for the pimples and just move it over to another um, section of the skin that is clean if you want to use the healing brush or any other tool stamp tool you can use whatever tool that actually works for you I rather using the patch tool and uh, before I was using the well, when I'm doing friction separation and I'm cleaning up the skin, I normally use the stump, the clone stump tool. But when I'm not doing that, I will just use the um, patch tool. So all I'm doing right now is to remove the uh, pimples from the skin real quick. So, as you see guys, um, retouching takes time, um, it's not like a click of a button, so you just have to be patient when you're retouching, and you have to have a love for retouching, you know, in order for you to actually reach somewhere, because it takes time, and if you want to just quickly retouch a photo uh, without going through and taking your time to do it. It's not gonna come out good and it makes no sense I remember back in the days when I started doing um, retouching I always wanted to be done very fast but I didn't understand that you know it takes time just like when uh, a painter is painting you know our artist is drawing they have to take time to you know be detailed and stuff like that and that's basically what I'm doing and that's basically what you have to do as well so yeah so for those who think that you just got to click a button and everything just you know look beautiful um, it's not like that guys it takes time Remo removing the um, blemishes from the skin especially if the model has a lot of pimples it's gonna take a little time as you can see here all right so i think i'm done i can't show you before and after because i didn't create a new layer but you get the drift you understand exactly what i'm doing all right so that's that i think on the hand right here i think i need to remove these as well all right that looks good so the next step now is to I'm gonna create a duplicate I do not necessarily have to create a duplicate but I just want to create a duplicate all right so I'm gonna do frequent separation now so over here I have the frequent separation action you can go to my website you can check the link in the description for the, um, the download link that will take you to my website and you can download the action from there all right so I'm gonna click on frequent separation this is a 16-bit frequent separation action but guess what it works just the same if you're using 
if you're working on a JPEG image, which is an 8 bit image, so don't worry about it. Trust me. I mean, don't worry about it. All right, so what I get to learn recently is that if you put the radius at 6.4, once the radius is low, what's going to happen is that the image will be more soft. Yeah, and if you put it like way up to like 20 the image itself will become it will look more natural when you're editing but i'm gonna use 6.4 <laughs> yeah even though i want my images to look natural but i still want to use because when i'm using the mixer brush i don't you know mix in one location for a very long time so yeah all right so i'm just gonna zoom the image in and then i'm gonna press m on the keyboard for the mixer brush your mixer brush is gonna be nested under brushes and this is what your mixer brush looks like when you're on the mixer brush ensure that your settings is like this um, right here should be cleared you can clear the brush by going here um, ensure that this is clicked so it automatically uh, clears the button your wet should be at 2% everything else here remains the same and do not click some for our layers all right so I'm going to just use the bracket on the keyboard to get my brush bigger and smaller and I'm just going to just, you know, just mix the image. So remember, when you're mixing, if the area is highlighted or, yeah, you mix that area only and then wherever the area, wherever, if another section of the, of the image is dark, you just um, mix there separately. <laughs> I was about to yawn a while ago and I pull it back. All right, so I'm doing the highlights right now. All right, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna do here. And using the mixer brush is basically flattening the skin and it also, um, well, it flattens the skin and it brings everything together, basically. Alright, that looks good. So if the skin is uneven, the mixer brush will actually um, even out the skin for you. So, yeah. Alright, so you see the face looks really smooth. It's because I'm using 6.4. If I was using like F20, if I was using like radius 20 or something like that, the image would not look so soft well you can still see the detail though if I zoom it up you can still see the detail of the model's skin so that's a good thing so I'm gonna come down here now to the model's neck and I'm gonna do the same thing just going up and down let's look at the before and after real quick before and after and then I'm gonna come down to the model's chest and do the same thing Do the model's arm. Ah, that looks good. I'm gonna do the hand as well. That looks good. Perfect. So I think I'm done with frequent separation. Let me just do, let me just zoom this up a little bit more and then do before and after. So what I'm gonna do is to uh, just click the eye before and after. So the next step now is to do dodge and burning. So I'm going to just close that. Then I'm going to go to dodge and dodge is basically working on the light area, the highlighted area. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard for my brush and show that my flow is at 1% and the opacity is at 100. All right. So wherever it is highlighted, um, I'm just going to just highlight there a little bit more. Nose bridge is normally highlighted. here I see a little highlight right there I'm just gonna highlight that as well let's look at the before and after for this so before and after good I'm gonna come down to the model's arm and just highlight here a little bit right here a little bit sometimes when you have a dark area you can highlight it as well so yeah all right that looks good so 
I'm gonna go on to dodge and burning now because I don't think I need to do any more highlighting maybe right here a little bit more and right here that's good so I'm gonna do um, burning now actually so I'm gonna come here for the burn tool and then I'm still on the brush at 1% for the flow and I'm just gonna um, paint the dark areas anywhere that has shadow I think I went too much on that one let me see for you know I'm gonna leave it I like the look of her face I like what it's doing and do the nose bridge as well yeah I think I like that all right for some reason I'm not sure if I like right here so I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit more by using the um, dodge layer it's like it's like it's a little bit dark so I just want to lighten it up a little bit before and after good so hmm not sure if I like what's going on with her face for some reason it kind of look more lighter than the all right I think I'm going to um you know what I'm gonna create a new freaking separation action I'm gonna go down to the low layer and create a new freaking separation action okay it's taking a time to it's taking some time to load and it's loading oh guys i'm almost at six thousand subscribers thank you guys for that i really appreciate it all right good so i'm at 6.4 again for the radius and then i'm gonna move this to the top by holding on, on control shift um right bracket bring it to the top and then for some reason i want to like blend these um contouring and highlighting that i just did and the contouring and highlighting is basically dodge and burn so i'm gonna come down here to the low frequency layer press m on the keyboard for the mixer brush and i'm just gonna try to blend everything together and this is actually mixing the dark area with the light area I think I like that more all right so the face is lighter than the body so we're gonna work on getting the body brighter to match the face so how I'm gonna do that now I think I'm gonna come here down to the adjustment layer and then I'm gonna click curve uh, curves and then I'm gonna bring the curve up a bit like that then I'm gonna click on the mask right here and then control I to invert then I'll get my brush I'm still on 1% for the flow, but I'm going to move this to about 5% uh, and I'm just going to um, paint the skin a little bit because I want the face to match the skin. I want the face to match the rest of the body, basically. Alright, good. So it's brighter, so that looks better to me um, before and after. And the reason why the face is brighter than the... Uh, lower part of the body is because the um the light was coming from this direction so it was on her face basically so it wasn't sharing for the face on the entire body it's just a spill that is actually over that side all right so i'm done with that now hmm, what else i need to do i don't think i need to do anything more to this image let's look at the before and after for everything so that's before and that's after all right so i think i'm going to color the image now and to do that, um, should I color the image first or should I just remove some of these things? I'm going to color the image. I'm going to click Ctrl Shift Alt E to create a new layer, Ctrl J to duplicate the layer, then Ctrl Shift A for camera raw. And I'm going to play with the colors a little bit. I'm going to run over to Collaboration. I kind of like the Collaboration um, colors. I'm going to play with the primary color and see what I can get. Oh, I like that. Let's look at the before and after. Oh, I didn't know that this tool can do a step back. Oh, nice. All right, before and after. So when I apply the uh, collaboration primary blue color, um, this is what I get and this is the original. So I think I love this actually. And I don't think I need to do anything else. I I'm, I'm basically finished with color grading. Yeah, that's just how fast it is. 
all right so the next step now i'm gonna go back to my um i'm gonna press j for the patch tool i'm just gonna get rid of that and then the background clean up the background a little bit i want to do some really creative stuff in studio guys but i'm so lazy i don't know why i'm so lazy these days but i'm gonna do something though i'm sure all right i was just trying to remove some of the hair from there but i'm not gonna do that what i'm gonna do i'm gonna add in more of the ear the hair um by using the clone stamp tool it's on the keyboard for the clone stamp tool i'm just gonna get a sample from here by holding on an alt and then right there I think I like that, it looks realistic, good. <laughs> All right, good, so I don't think I need to do anything else with this image, apart from fixing her nails. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and then I'm going to, I'm going to um, use the brush tool. Should I even do that? I, you know what, I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool. I think that works better. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Oh, I'm using Photoshop 2000 and um, 20 actually I'm press s on the keyboard for the clone stamp tool I'm at 100% and I'm think I'm gonna put this at about 39% and I'm gonna sample by holding an alt and then sample 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 all right that looks good I'm gonna come down to this one as well I'm gonna create a new layer again in case I make a mistake I'm just gonna so all I'm doing is sample and paint and trust me it doesn't have to be perfect because no one will actually know that you did that all right I think I want to add I'm gonna add some I'm gonna use the brush sample and do the rest. The brush at one is at one percent. All right, that's it. Don't need to do anything else. You can never know that I actually did that. <laughs> Good. All right, watching the time. All right, so I think that is it for the image. I don't think I need to do anything else. Um, let me just do my before and after again. You know, I love to do this since of late, and then. vertical arrange vertical up and then we'll fit the screen so this is gonna be before yeah and that's the before and after how did I do guys did you like that if you actually liked what I did give me a thumbs up share the video like and subscribe anyone need to stop saying that but i think if i say that people will do it but yeah thank you guys for watching and have a good one bye bye